Hi, this is Amina Sheikh here on Mirchi Plus and with me today I have a very conscious actress. She needs no introduction, I'm sure about it. That's none other than Sohali Khan. <laughs> Hi. And, and I'm not going to like, you know, call her gorgeous but I really want to check her memory Can right now. No, I want to check your memory right now because oh, no. you are gorgeous anyway but I really want to check your memory Are right you? now. Don't Since check my memory, my memory is not as good as it used to be. But let's try. Let's try. So, if you remember something which you know, which you have been like very fond of, of, or whenever you recollect, you feel very good about it. You know. Yes. Oh, a memory that I, um, I remember so many things. Like I live very much in the present. So, for example, um, today I played badminton three days ago and I won four games out of six. When I think about that, I feel good. I think about the fact that I slept for six hours yesterday, which is not bad. And I drank two glasses of water today, which is not bad. Which is not bad, which is quite good actually. Uh, if you could remember your very first memory of meeting Kunal. I completely remember. We were in a five-star hotel. We'd been signed for a film together. And we were supposed to meet each other. And we met in the coffee shop of Taj Land's End. And uh, I remember what he was wearing. He was wearing boots and like one of those buckles with a belt and sunglasses. And, um, uh, and I thought he was cute. Yeah. And the very first memory when your baby Inaya called you mother. Oh my God, I have a video of it. Yeah. Because of course now we document everything. So I remember it was raining, like full monsoon season. I'd taken her in a pram downstairs and we'd gone for a walk. And she had not said any words. Uh, she just made sounds. And I said, and I sat down with her and I said, Inaya, say mama. Inaya, say mama. Say mama. And then she looked at me for the longest time. And I was almost turning off the video because I was like, she's not going to say it. And then suddenly she just went, Mama, and I got it on video, and it was just the oof, it's just the cutest sound ever. And the first memory of shooting, you know, your shoot life, your work life, the very first time when you shot, you know, when you were in front of the camera. I remember the first movie I did because I did a few ads and, and photo shoots and things like that. But I remember I was working with Adil Hussain and there was a film called Iti Shri Kanto uh, in Bengal. And we were shooting in Shanti Niketan where there's an association with Tagore and some of our ancestors. And it was a small Bengali film and my character was quite silent but Adil is such a formidable actor. Um, and uh, I didn't have much to say but I just remember being very conscious of the camera and not look, to not look into the camera. Um, and my mother gave me advice. She said, imagine the camera is like a boy that you want to impress. So you'll always give your best profile to that boy. You're aware that the boy is there and looking at you and listening to everything that you say, but you won't look at him directly. You want to impress him, but you don't want to give him that much power also that you like, you don't want him to know that you know that he's there, but you know that he's there. So flirt with the camera a little bit. So two memories over here now. So uh, so so many good memories. I must say, touch wood. You know, it's it's just like very good. But you know, if your memories, if you could remain, you know, remember with with your Bhabi Karina and with your brother Sefli. Oh, um, I feel like the best, one. the best ones. And you're creating, of course, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm there. I'm thinking. Um, you know, like we just spent Easter together. And it was very sweet. He just organized a, tre the, both of them organized a treasure hunt for the kids. And then we, you know, he cooked a nice meal and we all sat down. Uh, I'm trying to remember specific memories um, where he wasn't being mean to me and we were very young. Uh, I remember him coming to a piano concert of mine. My parents couldn't come. And I was playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And, you know, he's eight and a half, nine years older than me. And they couldn't come, so he said, I'm going to come. And uh, he did, and I was very nervous because, you know, my big brother was there. And I made a mistake in the very beginning, um, but I continued on. And he came up to me afterwards and he said that, of course, you played well, but the fact that you kept your composure after you made a mistake and you completed the piece, uh, I'm very proud of you for that. And he remembers that story even today. So um, I remember that. So I can see the effects of, you know, consuming almonds really help. <laughs> and I, I must say that, you know, and I think like, you know, whenever you might be consuming. So, you know, what's what's your normal intake, you know, when it comes to almonds? I actually do have a handful of almonds. When I, before I started working with the California Board of Almonds, I used to have a few almonds in a day. I thought that they were fattening and I thought that I know that they're good for you, but I used to have literally like three or four. After working with them and understanding the importance of having 23 or a fistful of almonds, 30 grams of almonds, which give you protein, which give you vitamin E and good fats and, you know, help to 
you know, uh, lower your blood sugar, help with your skin, help with your memory, help with your sleep with the magnesium. It really is truly a superfood and you're supposed to have it in that quantity. So now I have like, I, 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 all calories are not the same. Uh, they're good calories for you and I have them either as a mid-morning snack or a mid-afternoon snack. And sometimes, you know, when you're hungry just before you go to sleep. And so you, you may not realize, but you know, I genuinely follow your account very aggressively because your workout videos inspire me a lot and especially the way you know the, the recent one was very funny in fact when your trainer was literally struggling to you know get you on board yeah. so you have always maintained a very you know good physique so what do you personally prefer yoga or pilates or like you know proper you know burnout workout I keep it I keep varying it I think whatever works for you at the time and the idea is not to get into a routine even your body shouldn't feel like it is doing the same thing you have to shock your body do something new challenge it break it down so it can rebuild uh, I've recently started doing a of running I never used to run before but a really good friend of mine runs around Bandra in the morning so I go with her um, I play badminton which is super fun and you can really burn like 600 calories and it gets very competitive and you play for much longer um, and it's good for your heart and then I work out of course with my trainer about three times in a week um, and or four times in a week and we do strength training there so I enjoy doing different things so you have worked in both Bollywood, the mainstream, uh, you know, or Bollywood and as well as, you know, indie for that matter. So when it comes to choosing the content, the kind of films you choose, you know, how do you, you know, take the projects? I honestly go by a, the script, of course, the story, my role in it and then the people that I'm working with. Because for me, the journey is very important. The process, the experience of being on set, because I love my home life so much. I adore my daughter and my husband and my life at home. To take me out of my comfort, it has to be worth it. So if I'm going to be spending 14 hours a day with you, I better enjoy your company. So the directors, your co-actors, where you're shooting, all of that really matters to me. Recently, even Sarah said that, you know, I don't take the royal family bag, you know, baggage that seriously because, you know, we have always had a normal life. Do you also, you know, prefer the same? Yes, I mean, for example, there is no uh, royalty anymore since 1971. And um, uh, I feel like the way that our parents brought us up, um, there was a sense of good values and grounding and not... I don't think we were spoiled at all. I understand we came from a position of privilege, uh, but you can always compare yourself to people who are more privileged than you. Everybody has someone who has more money than them, unless you're somebody who doesn't. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I feel like, um, you know, we went to a school where there were people with high income families, uh, but yet my father didn't ever stop to think when he's wanted to say no. Like, for example, the cost of petrol. Like, if I said, can I go to Priyanka's house? And he'd be like, no, petrol costs too much money. Um, and the car's already been out today. Or turning off the lights everywhere. He used to leave these yellow post-it notes saying, turn the lights off when you leave the room. Um, so we were very conscious of that. And now also, I think that it's criminal to leave uh, lights on in a room or to leave an air conditioner on in a room or to turn the geezer on and leave it for too long when you don't need it. So I think that being aware of the value of money even the fact that you have it, um, but that other people do not. And to be grateful for the things that you have and not to take them for granted are very important. Also, Soha, uh, you recently said that you yourself are scared of horror movies. So how did you agree on doing Chori 2? Because it takes away from a lot of the fear, right? When you work behind the scenes and you see what all goes together and how really it's not that scary. And what adds to the fear is the sound in a horror. So the sound will come later. So that's fine. I'm actually the scary thing in Chori 2. I'm the antagonist. And, you know, there were no mirrors on set. <laughs> so I was all right. Um, and um, I think it's fun. I do enjoy horror, but I watch it like this. So, you know, I think without your audiovisual senses, it's a lot easier to take. You don't feel so scared. But has anyone seen you in that ghost avatar at your family and you know, have got scared of that? Well, my daughter FaceTimed me and uh, I didn't, I, like, she really wanted to speak to me and I was in my full get up and I answered the call and I was like, oh, it's really close to bedtime and I hope I don't scar her for life. Um, and she looked at me and she was like, I think I'll call you later. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I think you should call me later. But I showed her some pictures of the whole process of getting into makeup. So you can see it took two hours of prosthetics to see from the beginning to the end how one person is being dressed up to look like this. So hopefully it takes away from the fear and hopefully we haven't scarred her. And lastly, I saw like, you know, your husband getting a very cool tattoo, which is a very massive tattoo, in fact. So would you like to just say something about it? Because I don't know what exactly it is. It's such a big tattoo, though. 
It's not here, it's here. Yeah, it's yeah. here. <laughs> but it's such a big one, actually. It is a big one, but it's not my place to say. I think when he wants to talk about it and what he but, wants but to say. But do you personally prefer you know, getting tattooed or like, are you scared of like, you know? I uh, am not scared, I don't think. I was intrigued to know how much it hurts, yeah. you know, because I've had injections and I've had my ears pierced. But I don't know, you know. He made quite a lot of fuss mm -hmm. towards the end. He said, oh, the knee is very painful and all. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if it is. But apparently it can be get quite painful. It's quite intense. And I think that you have to be personally committed to it it has to mean something to you because it is on your skin forever um, I don't have any tattoos I don't think I will ever get any tattoos yeah and since go go are gone too we have been hearing a lot of rumors about it so will we get to see you too because we saw you like doing you know a cameo kind of yeah, a thing I'm just so excited that go are gone is in my filmography like if you look at me then and uh, you know my filmography and my IMDB go go are gone is there even though I'm there for like three seconds but it's such a cool film that I'm so excited to be a part of it I have no idea about Go Go Agon 2 I hope they make it I think I should definitely be like all over it um, but certainly not my choice <laughs> what's next apart from Chori 2 um, Chori 2 is next and uh, they're looking at me and saying don't talk about other things apart from almonds yeah. so I won't um, I'll just say go step by step so the next step is hopefully movie yeah. horror and Chori 2 and hopefully people will like it and then we'll go on to do more there's lots of interesting work out there Thank you so much for your lovely time and all the very best. Thank so, uh, you. Thank you so much.